Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV Whiskey One Good Vibrations to talk just a little bit more about collinear antenna arrays and how much gain you can expect to get from one of them. So let's look at an example. This is a four element vertical collinear array made out of vertical dipoles. Now if you feed them all in parallel, you feed them all in phase, they're all identical, and you space them optimally, then ideally the gain that you can expect to get in dB over a single element is equal to 10 times the logarithm of the number of elements. In this case n represents the number of elements and if they are folded dipoles like we see in this diagram here then you the this gain will be in dbd because a folded dipole has zero dbd in other words it's the same as an ordinary dipole in terms of its radiation pattern directivity and gain so this is the general formula right here 10 times the logarithm of the number of elements under ideal conditions. Now you don't necessarily have to have um, dipole antennas here. You could have say three element Yagis or six element Yagis in a collinear array such that their driven elements are all along a single line like this and all optimally spaced. And if each uh, one of those antennas already has uh, say 7 or 8 or 10 dBd, then the gain that you get, the extra gain that you get is over and above that. So it's compared to a single element. That's why I didn't write dBd there. So let's just do some calculations. Imagine for a moment that you just want to use these two elements right here. How much gain are you going to get from that? Well, it's two elements, so n equals two. Let's uh, do a little calculation. I'm down here in the nerd cave doing this uh, particular video because my attic office is 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't really want to sit up there. I've got a little better calculator here for visibility, too. It's called Calcute, C-A-L-C-U-T-E. I think it's a free downloadable program. So let's take the logarithm of two. When we do that, we get 0 0.301 times 10, 3 dB gain over a single element. That means, in effect, a doubling of the power. Two antennas, twice the power, but the trade-off, of course, is that you're going to get a flatter radiation pattern. That is to say, the main lobe is going to be sharper. That's how you get the gain. You can't get a free lunch with any kind of a directive antenna. It divides the power up among the two, but then it focuses that effective radiation in a more sharp horizontal lobe. Now let's suppose that you want to go with three elements, all in parallel, remember, fed in parallel, and fed in phase. What's the gain going to be now? We can bring up our trusty Calcute. It's a very basic calculator, but fortunately it does have logs. Base 10 logarithms, and also the natural logarithm, the base E log, if you want that. Times 10 here equals 4.77 dB of gain. So in this case right here, we had 3 dB of gain. Here we have approximately 4.8 dB of gain. Now suppose that you want to go with four elements, and that's what we actually see in the diagram here. Well, now n equals 4. We can bring up our trusty Calcute once again and take the logarithm of 4 and multiply by 10 to get 6 db of gain. Now in this case it is dbd because I'm showing dipoles, but if they were Yagis 
it would be 6 dB plus whatever the gain of the individual antennas happens to be. So if each individual Yagi had, say, 8 dBd of gain, then 8 plus 6, 4 of them, we'd get 14 dBd of gain. Uh, and uh, that's, uh, that's sometimes done. You may occasionally see collinear antennas like this for repeater use if, in fact, you, they want to focus their energy in a particular horizontal compass direction. Now we'll skip five elements and we'll go with the six elements that I showed in a previous video and I'll uh, you may have been a little confused by the way that I derived that figure for the game there but in this case n equals six so we bring up our calcute again logarithm of six is 0.778 times ten about 7.8 dB of gain. So, uh, we, I guess we can call that 7.8 dB of gain. So that is how you can calculate the gain of a collinear antenna. But remember, the elements all have to be identical. They all have to be fed in parallel. I neglected to write down that they all have to be fed in the exact same phase. That means that the phasing harness has to be such that each phasing harness element or length of transmission line is exactly the same length as all of the others. You can't get away with making them one wavelength longer or shorter because that will introduce a little loss and distort the pattern and take it away from the optimum condition. And again, they all have to be optimally spaced, and generally that's about a half a wavelength between, um, between elements, so they're pretty nearly end to end. You can just about scrunch them up against each other. Of course, you don't want those elements to actually touch but that's how you can calculate the gain of antennas of this particular sort. And they'll even work in outer space, and they'll even work on planets other than Earth, like this one that has two moons. Stan Gibalisco, W1GV, signing off until next time, 73 and so long.